an area where funnel gathering really shines is using images um, basically to create your lighting effects. So an image-based lighting approach. Um, you saw how we could use constant material or other illumination shaders to basically light the scene and throw colors kind of into your lighting. Um, but with images, you can basically match real-life lighting scenarios uh, very quickly. And it allows for kind of subtle color gradations that you can't uh, really duplicate easily using regular lighting techniques. So to use uh, images basically for lighting, uh, what we're going to do is just take our grid and I'm going to quickly just connect an image node up to the surface. And I don't need to go through Fong or anything. We just connect the image right up to the surface port because what we're trying to do is extract just the pure color information from the image node. And I need to uh, create a projection on my object. So let's go XZ there. And you can see right away we're, we're using the noicon.pick here, which isn't the most exciting thing. But you can see we're pulling the color information from it and getting this nice, soft, diffuse uh, color gradations from one zone to another. Uh, really quickly, just go to my spotlight. And what I'm going to do is bring that down to near zero. And often when you're using images to light, you don't want much contribution from your direct lighting sources. Uh, it does help sometimes if you want to focus light in a certain area or add extra lighting effects. But if you're just trying to match the lighting to background plate, you're best off bringing all your lights down to zero and just using the images for the lighting effect. So there we go. Uh, what I'm going to do is use an image that's a little more uh, aesthetically pleasing, I guess. So... We have the sky image. I'll use that. And let's go to the front view. And we'll just translate this a bit up so we can get a little bit of a cooler effect here. So there we go. Um, now, ideally, uh, it's best to work with HDR type images. Uh, because the HDR images contain a greater range of luminosity values, uh, you can really get a lot more of a dynamic lighting effect. So you'll have a greater range between your your darkest areas and your brightest areas. And that really comes across um, when you're doing image-based lighting. So natively, we don't support .hdr files uh, in the render tree. The effects tree does. So you can use the effects tree to convert a .hdr file to a, a format we support like .map. Um, what I often do is I'll just use IMF copy from the command line. So if you do IMF copy, you can see all the options that are available. What I'm going to do is just feed it my HDR file on disk here. And then I'll just write that out to the same location. So we want to convert to dot .map format, which is a mental ray format uh, optimized for memory. And it also supports uh, floating points. So we can store all the HDR info into that map format. So we're going to convert it to map, and we want to put it in RGBA float point format. So we'll do that, and the image has been created. And if we look on disk, you can see the map file is there, and it's quite a bit larger than the HDR file. So we go to our grid now, and I can just drag and drop that map file into the render tree and connect that up to the image port. And there we go. Now, the image is a bit duller than the, than the background sky I was using. Um, so what I'm going to do is just scale that up a little bit so we get a bit of a richer effect. There we go. And so you can see here we're getting, you know, the dark areas are a bit cooler, whereas the hot highlights in the sky are a lot stronger. So you're getting... Uh, what I would say is kind of a more interesting effect with the HDR file. Now, ideally, um, if you just want to match your lighting with a background image plate, 
you probably want to just apply that as environment map so that creates a spherical environment around your objects and use the images uh, image specified to create the lighting so to do that I'm just gonna hide my object and we go at the pass level so we'll open up the pass node here and we'll add an environment shader and in the environment shader we can specify the HDR file we just created so right now it's using noicon.pic we'll quickly go and switch that to the street map file there we go so now we've got a spherical environment map around the object and on the actual environment shader we have a lot of controls for um, modulating uh, how the image is used so we're interested in the final gathering control so we can actually make the image a lot stronger for final gathering rays a lot more sensitive for final gathering rays so we can get kind of a, a more richly lit look something like that that might be a little bit hot I'll bring that down a little bit the next thing we want to concern ourselves with is actually optimizing the final gathering settings um, for render so we go to the region options and you can see right now I'm just using the automatic compute options and now because we're using an environment map to light the scene we're not as concerned with getting all the specific information from the final gathering map um, sorry from the HDR map but rather we just want to use it for general lighting effect so we can actually get away with using uh, a larger radius here so let's say 50 and 5 so we're basically going to blur our final gathering map and just get the general lighting effect so we should see a lot of the noise in this area kind of smooth out so it is a little bit smoother it's a bit smoother here and what we want to do is just bring up the accuracy a little bit so we sample the environment map a little bit more um, to get a little more detail resolved in the corners and cracks and that should be pretty good for uh, uh, final render so we see there it's a lot smoother I would suggest if we go up to about 400 or something that would that would be about good um, now if we look at the bottom um, I'm actually gonna specify a location for my map file so we got a, a location specified for the map file right now we're recomputing the map file from scratch uh, every time we refresh and that has a certain cost associated with it. You're rebuilding and recomputing all the final gathering information for every frame. So once you have um, a decent result, what you might want to do is go to a pen generated final gathering points to file. So in this case, now it'll just take the new final gathering information. So as I orbit it around, I'm exposing new areas. It'll compute the final gathering for these areas and only add that information to the map so in this case we don't have a huge accuracy and um, you know so the final gathering w map won't be too large and we can just add the additional final gathering information uh, to the file and that's probably the best way to go with this kind of scene so that uh, generally is an overview of how final gathering can be used uh, for lighting